Hi guys, Barnaby Slater here again for Spurred On and it's another episode of Youth Watch with our man in the know, Craig Vi. Craig, how are you? Very well, thank you Barnaby mate, yeah, how are you? We're just saying in the office how much we like your more kind of uh, philosophical book reading set you've got behind you. Uh, yeah, I thought you'd like that, yeah. Are, are there many uh, Spurs autobiographies there? Have you got the... Uh, it's, it's, the, the... it's only Spurs autobiographies, that's all it is. Just don't zoom in. Please. If we had the technology to zoom in, we won't, We might do that, but you know, this yeah. is spurred on. We uh, we put all our money into the the season tickets that we don't currently sure. own. Anyway, let's get on with the youth, uh, youth chat. Uh, Stevenage on Saturday, you were at the game for us. Tell oh, us a little indeed. bit about yeah. it. Well, actually it was a really good performance. I think I can say that. that there were some holes, perhaps a little bit of a lack of intensity. Um, some things that we definitely need to go away and work on, but all in all, I think it was a really good exercise for quite a lot of It was the a Spurs players. 11, so wasn't it? So, so That's right, yeah, to come back to the start, it was a Spurs 11 versus basically a Stevenage first team. I mean, they had quite a few players out, they've had quite a few new players come in as well, so it's a changed team for them as well, but the point I want to make is that this is a team of seasoned, hardened Angry pros. men, basically. Angry, right. angry men. Exactly, yeah. And, 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 yeah, and I'll, I'll come on to something along that, those lines a bit in a moment. But, um, yeah, and they, that's that's exactly how they play. Whereas our Spurs eleven basically consisted of the, the under-21s. Okay. And that's, that's managed by Ugo uh, Ehiog, isn't it? The former Villa defender. By Ugo Ehiog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I quite like the way he's starting to shape up the teams. He, the, he made a quote recently about how he wants all of the players to start having this winning mentality. I mean, it's something yeah. a lot of managers say, of course, but also talking a lot about giving them the space to express themselves uh, and giving them the confidence to do so as well. And I think that kind of showed, actually, in the match that I was at on Saturday. We kept the ball really, really well. We moved it about well. We've got a lot of very technically gifted players. Um, Milos Velkovic, again, was outstanding. Cameron Carter-Vickers, out of this world. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned it last it, time. And he's big, he's he's big enough, you think, Absolutely to possibly immense. move up into the first team in the next year or two? Yeah. He, right. doesn't, he doesn't have the height, but again, you know, for a 17-year-old, he is just right. hench. That's the only word I can think of. I mean, he, he to, to come on to the sort of nasty taxes of Stevenage, it was an expert yeah. Charlie Lee who took out, re, in a really bad way, Nathan Odua. Uh, it was a disgraceful the challenge, and he was actually could you, out. Could you for seven actually? Because I've read a lot about match, it, but what but... what kind of challenge was it then? So how exactly did you know? Was it? Uh, uh, did he knee him in the head? Well, I don't know what actually happened. No, well, from where I was sitting, he, he just completely went through him. He just he he, he sort of, it, looked, it seemed like he had not very much intention to go after the ball, and he just he he just wanted to go straight through the player and uh, and to really leave something on him as well. Nathan Odd, where it needs to be said started the game on fire. He's been yeah. on fire all pre-season, actually. Uh, he scored against... Um, uh, in fact, he played really well against Reading. Scored against South End, set a couple up in a, uh, a match that we played at Hotspur Way. Um, he played really well in the, the National Under-21s tournament in France. The Under-21s went to recently. And he started this game in exactly that fashion. He was bringing out the step-overs, scored really early on, turned inside a few players and smashed it in with his left foot. And I think Charlie Lee really took umbrage with that. He, he didn't like the fact that Odua was, yeah. I wouldn't even call it showboating, he was just better than the rest. Actually, it turns out that he's, he's not injured, which is, which is fantastic, considering the form that he's been in. Um, and he, he just he received a concussion. Uh, they, they took him off as a precaution, of course. They've given him a scan. He's got the all clear, so he just needs to rest and recuperate. And, uh, he'll be back stronger. But... Um, it was, a, it was a good showing from the lads, and um, I, I was quite impressed with one or two of them. And there were a couple of other players that you were impressed by, weren't you? Carl uh, Walker-Peters. Now, Carl, he got a bit of game time out in Malaysia in our post-season tour. Yeah, he did, and, and I was impressed with him on Saturday. Um, a few people kind of questioned his performances and, and whether uh, he was a little bit out of his depth in Malaysia. I think that's, there were possible truths in that, but it's, it's also slightly unfair. I mean, he's only 18. Uh, he does have a lot to learn, but uh, again, he, he he had a really good performance at the weekend. He he gets up and down the pitch really, really well. He's to be honest with you, just like his namesake Kyle Walker, he's fantastic going forwards. Another player you were impressed by, Ismail. Now I'm not sure how to say this, Ismail Azawi. You think? Yeah, I, I think it's Azawi. Uh, a double Z A O U I. Azawi. As a we, I'm I'm not too sure, but um, you're putting that to one side. 
he's a he's another talent. Um, and I, I feel like I keep saying this about players, but, but we really do have a a, a wealth of yeah. a very gifted, very tricky, very quick, talented attacking midfield players. And he's another one. We picked him up from uh, Anderlecht's academy. You, you might recall that that's where Manchester United got Adnan Yanazai from. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very sought after at the time. I think Luka of... Lukaku came through them as well, I think, didn't he? he? Yeah, he did indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that on that, that conveyor belt of excellent young Belgian talent, he's another one. He's, he's Swiss born, but, but does play for Belgium. He's represented them at under 15, under 16 and under 17 level. In fact, uh, in this summer's under 17s uh, UEFA European tournament, uh, he went all the way to the uh, semis with Belgium. They lost to the, uh, the the eventual winners, France, in the semi-finals. But he uh, he came fourth uh, on the list of uh, the, the the golden boot winners at the tournament. Fantastic, three goals. And wasn't he just voted as player of uh, another tournament that they played in? Yeah, he was indeed. Um, in in slightly strange circumstances, he's played mostly for us. Uh, during the the under 18s mm -hmm. or in for the under 18s this was with the under 21 squad uh, they went out for a, a what the, that was called a national under 21s tournament there were about eight teams there the the team overall didn't perform particularly well mm. we drew a couple lost, lost on them. pens didn't we? we lost a few on pens yeah lost on pens it was quite a weird tournament in that you would draw a group game but then you'd have to decide it by penalty shootout mm. and we we that happened twice in our first two games we drew then we lost on penalties the third game we won, and then the fourth game we lost to Lorient, but apparently the performances by them were a bit better. However, he, uh, Ismail Azawi was both the player of the tournament. There was quite a lot of talent on the show, so that's a nice accolade for him to have yeah. as well, adding to the, the one of the Euros that he got. And, and again, you know, it's a player that's being quite well talked about throughout Europe. Okay, well, that, that actually leads us quite well uh, into... Uh, we're going we're gonna to stop now and go on to part two in a minute. Guys, if you've been uh, watching and enjoying what Craig has to say about our our Youth Academy Young Guns, do tune into part two where we'll be talking a bit more about some of those tournaments that the under uh, underage age groups, underage, are they underage? I don't know. But the under 16s and under 17s, etc., uh, have been playing in. And uh, also uh, a couple of other things, including some new contracts for some of the better players and the, the players that other big clubs were sniffing around in our academy. So do uh, remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you like what, you're, what you've heard or if you've got a different opinion and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and tune into part two of this week's Youth Watch. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. 